are hanging out at Rancho San Antonio Park in the San Francisco Bay Area. We are under this gorgeous 300 year old oak tree. She is the home of some wild bees. How the heck did these girls build their home here? Before they moved here, they were living at another house. It could have been a hollowed out tree and under a roof hang, and we don't know why they moved. I like to assume that their population got really big and they outgrew their starter home and they needed to fly off to a bigger and better place. But maybe they got into trouble. Maybe there were some ants. Maybe there was bumblebees or wasps or a skunk or even a fire. Before you move, what do you do? You eat tons of food. You need lots of energy because moving is a lot of hard work. You're going to need to make your new home using wax. And when you eat honey, that sugar converts into wax. Bees are so lucky. When humans eat sugar, we get fat. But you'll never see an overweight bee. They need to find a location. What I like to call them is the real estate bees. These bees are called scout bees. They are flying everywhere to find the perfect home. Ideally, it's south facing, some place that is warm in the morning it gets afternoon shade. They also want protection from the elements. So the wind, the rain, but also other critters, the alligator lizards and all those bad guys that might get into their home and eat their honey. No buenos. The scout bees found this awesome location. Then they come home and they send out a pheromone and they tell everyone, hey guys, we're gonna move. So they eat up a ton of honey and they get the heck out of Dodge. Well, when they move on in, it's just a hollow tree. You want to clean and disinfect. Marie Kondo would be very proud how clean and organized bees are. They don't have bleach, they don't have sponges. They use propolis. It's plant sap. They mix it up with saliva, with a little bit of wax. It's really sticky and gooey, like brown chewing gum. Sounds disgusting, but it's amazing stuff. It has antibacterial properties. It keeps things extra clean and they can mold it, fill in little crevices so there's no drafts. They also wanted a rough interior. They are just about to do some major construction. They need something like a foundation to build off of. What do they do next? This is my favorite step. They are like circus time performers. You gotta see this. It's called festooning. So think of all these little girls and I say girls because all the worker bees are girls. I love the boys, they're called drones, but they're super lazy. The girls do all the hard lifting. The girls are kind of like a ladder or trapeze performers. They dangle in the open space. It forms kind of a scaffolding building their comb. Wax is secreted from eight glands out of their little belly. Her hands are tied. They're, they're busy holding on to other sisters. Another sister comes and takes out from the abdomen area wow. this wax and she chews it. It warms up and it becomes like clay. You know how when you warm up Play-Doh and it gets soft? She molds a cylinder shape the size of her body, which is only three eighths of an inch, by the way. She has a little tilt in it because when you put things into a basket, you don't want things to fall out. They're gonna be storing their nectar, their food, and the queen's also gonna be laying babies. She takes all of these little circles and she keeps putting all these circles together. This is where the magic begins. They vibrate their flight muscles. That hive gets nice and warm and that starts to melt the wax. And the wax turns from the circles and they kiss and it becomes a flat shape and they turn into hexagons. That little side is only 0.1 millimeter. That's one tenth of the size of a dime. But after building their whole honeycomb, it holds 30 times its own weight. Ooh. There is a hundred thousand tiny hexagons. It would only weigh 2.6 pounds. Hexagons are the shape that use the least amount of wax. They're really practical in covering space. They also provide room for that larger queen to sit and lay an egg, which by the way, is about the size of some basmati rice. And it turns into kind of a C shape. She becomes a full adult size bee. These girls moved in five years ago. So bees want to live in their home for a long time. The whole goal is shelter, food, and throw 
the population. Out of a home of roughly 50 to 80,000 bees, there's only 500 boys. When mama brings home baby, you disinfect the crib. That's what they're doing here. They take that propolis and they line the comb. They make it perfectly clean. Now there's a rumor out there that all hexagon shapes are the same size. Guess what? Boys are bigger. Boys need more space. The very top story is where the honey is made. The next layer down is pollen for baby food. The next layer down is where the baby girls are born. It's called brood. And right next door, that's where the drones, the boy bees are born. Down below, that's where future queens will be born. They only have one entrance in, one entrance out. It reminds me how the old movie theaters used to be. Bees don't like light. They completely work in the dark 24 hours a day. They have a security guard out front. They are on patrol looking for trouble. It could be ants, you know, like a lizard, it could be a bear. They don't want to sting because they are one hit wonder. They sting, they die. They send out that pheromone scent saying, calling for backup, more security guard bees that come out and they line the whole front porch. But let's pretend some critter did get in. Maybe little alligator lizard is cold. He comes in very innocently. They don't want to kill the lizard, but they have to. They pile up on top of the little critter engulfing and they basically overheat them. And then, remember, they're clean freaks. They can't carry that big alligator lizard out. They use propolis. It's a mummification all around that little alligator lizard. Wow. The queen is laying up to 2,000 eggs a day. You run out of room. It's usually in spring. Half of the family takes off. This family could be living here in 30 years generation after generation. That's how bees make a beehive. If you like what you see, please subscribe. We are at 5013C. Our focus is on bee education. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being happy. Bye. That's a wrap.